All right, everyone, I'm back. I think I figured out what was going wrong. So this is part two of the lesson recap for February or March 2nd. So we were over here in the console, and I was showing you some examples of what the sorts of things you could do. Now I have this program here called uh, Draw a Square Along the Perimeter of the Console. So let's compile that, GCC. And I'm just going to type in the beginning of the name and I press tab and it auto completes it. It's really nice when file names are so long. Normally you would not have such long file names but to help me remember what's going on I've done this. And we're going to include the dash L option. This is a we're passing an argument to the linker. What is the linker you're asking? You first compile your code then you link your code to the code that's in the ncurses N library. And that's what's happening here. And let's ignore that. Whoops, what happened? N, ah, wrong name for the library. So it's n cursors. Oh, it still doesn't like it. N. Oh dear, I can't spell. All right, it's SES. All right, now it compiled. I'm going to clear the screen, and I'm going to run the program, a dot out, and look, it's printed a square along the perimeter of this window, and it's also reporting how many rows and how many columns it discovered in this window. So now I'm going to run the program again. Before I do that, I'm going to resize this window, and let's run the program again, see what happens. So it's discovered the new dimensions of the window, drawn the square around that window, and then reported the new rows and columns. So that's pretty cool. We have not, we don't have enough, we could, we've not done anything like this in our exercises so far. So how is it doing that? So let's go have a look back at my projects. Just briefly, I'm just giving you a taste of how you might do something like this. So again, this is in the end cursors uh, library. So here it is. Uh, so it's going to draw a square around the outer edge of the screen. It's displaying text at the center of the screen. And when you run this in the terminal, it detects the size of the window. Note that all moves are to rows and column, which is Y and X, not X, Y. So from going forward, I'm always referring, I'm, in my code I use row and column, not x, y, or y, x. So now if I scroll down here, <clears throat> the code is fairly straightforward. These are the prototypes. Here on line 24, I'm including the ncurses library. And then this library includes the standard I.O. library, so you don't have to include it here. And then I have two prototypes for drawing the square and displaying text in the square. On line 34, it it calls this function in the end cursors library. So this says uh, increase or initialize the screen. Now there's the physical screen. Scroll out. This, if I clear this, what you see here is the physical screen. The end cursors screen is sort of drawn on top of this. And then on top of that, you can have other screens which are other windows and you can draw into those other windows separately so it becomes windows within windows it's yeah pretty powerful so uh, that's initialized the screen then it here is where it gets the number of rows and columns in the given window and it stores these up here in these two variables rows and columns and then it calls draw the square and here it is now notice there's no hard coding in here it's going to loop around. This is the uh, for loop to loop across all the columns. So it's going to use this loop to draw the top row and the bottom row. And it's going to use this loop to draw the left side and the right side. And it simply moves the cursor to some location and then it adds this character. This is how they output a character. Down here it moves the cursor to a given row and adds the appropriate uh, the vertical bar character. And then down here for the display of the text, so here's the text I want to display, 
and I want to move the cursor to the center of the screen. That's rows divided by two and columns divided by two. It's also adding this, gets the length of the message and subtracts that from columns to really get the center of the screen, get the center of the message at the center of the screen, and it displays the, uh, the message here. So that's how it does it. It uh, takes a little bit of reading through their documentation, but you can do it. Let's take a look at another project. Back to end cursors, and let's see. Uh, yeah, you can read input. It says read the input display, read input display output. I forget what that does. Um, uh, here's an interesting one. Let's select. Okay, that's number five. I'm going to run that from the console as well. So I'll make this a little bigger and list out the files. And there's number five, select menu items with arrow with the arrow keys. So let's compile that. GCC 5-tab uh, linker option and n curses. Compiles OK and then we run it a dot out. And we have this. Now, this is a nice looking window, better than what we were able to draw. This is how NCurses draws a window. This is a window inside this bigger NCurses window, which is on top of the physical window. And I'm pressing the down arrow. When I go here, it goes, so it loops around the top. If I go up, it loops around. So you could be using this kind of thing to. Um, uh, for your program. Okay, now let's take a look at now number six is going to read a file and display the contents of the file on the screen. So let's try that one. Let's uh, GCC six dash. Uh, what's the one we just did? Oh yeah, the. Well, I'm not going to go into the code for this menu item. Just be aware that that's the sort of thing you can do. Uh, let's tab here in the interest of time. Uh, dash L in cursors. And we compiled a dot out. Ah, now this program is expecting a argument on the command line. It's the name of the file that it's going to read. Now I didn't put it on there, so it displayed this usage message. It's, it's telling me I left off the name of some .c file. And the one I want to read is called data.c. Now it's a real source program, but I just called it data. So let's, uh, by the way, you can, if you press the up arrow, you can go back into the history and, and retrieve commands that you've already typed. So I want this one, and I'm going to add this command line argument. So it's, this program is going to read in this program. And there it read it and it displayed the contents of the file on the screen. And it can't fit the whole thing on the screen, so it paused and says, press any key to continue. Now, there's a bug in it. I'm not sure what's causing it. If I press Enter, the program stops. It doesn't display the rest of the program, the rest of the file. So when I saw that, I thought, okay, that'd be nice if I could go in and debug that program in here using their beautiful debugger. But I tried it. I, I'm not able to read the file in to the program when it's running in this context. So I came over here and I sent a message to our friends at Online GDB. And I got a reply right here. So I said to them, can I read a, can I, can I read, whoops, can I read, can I, okay, I should say read a file, <laughs> just notice the type, can I read a file from my program, the file I want to read is another .c file in the same folder as the reading file, and they replied quickly and they said, Yes, that's possible. And here is a code snippet on how to do it. So I haven't had time to look at this, but when I do, I'll, I'll let you know how it works. Point is, they're very responsive, these guys. And if you have a question, you can ask them. 
Now, let's see how easy it is to read a file. In case in your program, in your project, you want to access a file, uh, here is a sample of how to do that. So the first thing, if you notice on line 14, let's get rid of this breakpoint. On line 14, there is a variable called fp, and it's of type file. This is defined in standard I.O. library. And notice the star that's saying that this variable is a pointer. So this variable is going to hold a reference to the file that we're going to open. But once the file is open, we will then store the reference to that file in, P, in FP. We come down here and it just checks to make sure that they entered the name of the file on the command line. I'll explain these kind of details later. If they did, then it tries to open. So that's file open. The name of the file is inside here. It's coming from the command line. We want to open it in read-only mode. And then if this is successful, it will store the pointer to the file in the variable. Now, if the, if the result of this F open is null, it means it couldn't read the file and the program ends. If it read the file successfully, we continue. And here we initialize the end cursor screen. This is where we get the size in, of the window in rows and columns. And then we call F or file get character. And we, we're in this loop and we keep reading characters from the file until we hit end of file. Again, this is a constant defined in standard I.O. Now I'm just going to zoom out. So uh, let's ignore the contents of this is where it goes in. And it's reading the file character by character and it's looking for comments. And it's going to display the comments in bold. So here you can turn on an attribute for the bold, turn on the bold attribute. You can uh, get the current location of the cursor, move to that location, and display the character in bold. So not that hard to do that. And it keeps looping like that until it hits the end of the file. And then down here, it ends the uh, and the, the end cursor session closes the physical file and then ends the program. So, in a nutshell, if you want to access a file, and I'll create a much simpler example of this, but you simply open the file, you read from the file, and you close the file. Easy. Now, let's take a look at just two more examples and that'll be it. Another example is, um, ah, yeah, let's look at uh, this one, number seven. That's pretty interesting. So I'm going to clear the screen. Well, I'm just going to uh, compile number seven. Uh, linker and cursors. And a.l. So we have this screen now. I don't, they could turn that blinking cursor off. I don't know why they left it on. I think it's just an oversight. Now, what happens if I press the left, the right arrow? It starts moving. If I press the left arrow, the, now this is not just a box. This is a window, and you could draw text into this window. I press the up arrow, down arrow. Now watch what happens if I go off, if I keep going all the way to the edge of the console, it goes off the edge, and it continues going off the edge. Now watch, the cursor is, maybe that's why they left it in. The cursor is now coming in from the left. If I go back to the left, the cursor goes out the left side, and the, and the window reappears from the right side. So this is pretty cool. I'm not exactly sure what you would use this for, but... I can imagine what quickly comes to mind for me is Tetris. Now I can, you know, use this to control descending blocks. If I want, if I have a block that's descending, I can move it left and right. If you've ever played Tetris, you know that it's about moving the square into position so it descends into the correct position. So there is Tetris, the beginnings of a Tetris program. 
just make this thing smaller and make it all black. And also, you can change the colors of things using end cursors. So I'm going to press the function key, F1. That ends the program. And I think there's one more that's worth looking at. Uh, let's see, draw the square. Go to, uh, I guess that's about it. So this library is pretty interesting, and it's a way for you to do something more uh, visual from a C program. And it's pretty powerful. I'm continuing, continuing to explore this, but so if you have some idea that you want to try that's a little more visual and uh, not just calculating something, but, you know, more gamey, then you can propose such an idea, and then we can try and figure out how to do it in end cursors. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Uh, let's go back to the uh, lessons page. Yeah, so you're, you're, you've got to get an idea for your uh, project, and then you need to work on the research plan. So here is inquiring and analyzing. Now this is fairly straightforward. I can show you an example of someone that's already done it. For those of you that are not sure how to get started. And then the research plan is very straightforward. Just read this uh, information up top. I'm not going to read it to you. But you're just going to fill in this table. You don't have to do the research yet. So for example, if I'm going to create a project that has something to do with files, well, something I have to research is where can I get information about reading and writing to files? List out a source where you found the information and specify if it's a primary or secondary source. And I want to have a more graphical user interface. Are there libraries that could help me with that? Well, one of them is end cursors. You can hunt around see if there's something else. I've hunted a bit and so far end cursors seems to be the most uh, easiest way to get started. Now, let's, lastly, let's just take a look, because I showed this in class. Let's take a look at someone who has completed their uh, need for solution. Okay, here's Ryan. He came up with an idea quickly. And here is his need for solution. So, uh, he's got about just a little over one page to do this. And so he has described his idea, and he's, he's going to use it. Now, he's going to use a graphical, graphical user interface. I don't know which library he's using. I don't think it's the one I just showed you. It has something to do with calculating quadratic equations and drawing a graph on the screen. So here is his problem statement right there. And then he received some feedback from me, and he's recorded it here. And then he's discussed some soft skills. So what soft skills do you need to talk about? It's mentioned in the handout. So you have the handout over here. This is the instructions, and then you're doing your work over here in the DF file. So that's an example of the sort of thing you have to do. Now, has he, done, he hasn't done the table yet, but he's got it set up. Now he's planning to use eight research questions, it looks like. If you look down here at the, yeah, he's using the old, Ryan, you're using the old DF template, because the rubric is not here. The rubric is in the handout, my mistake. The rubric is over here, read this, while you're doing your work, if you come down here, it says, uh, has explained the problem and the soft skills in detail, has completed eight of the exercises, and has received teacher feedback. And over here, it has completed the research planning table, which includes at least six research questions. So read the red stuff. Make sure you're not leaving anything out. All right, guys, that's it for now. This is getting lengthy, and I don't want to just keep going. It'll take forever to get it up to YouTube. Okay, cheerio. Bye.